Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Cord Connects. My name is Moshe Weitzberg. I am the Cord Secretary Treasurer. I am joined by my partner, Dr. Marianne Howie. I would like to welcome, welcome you all to Cord Connects. Our topic for today is a very timely one. It is Residency Graduation 2020, Creative Ideas for Unique Circumstances. As I'm sure many of you are in a similar boat to us in that social distancing has tremendously impacted our ability to plan graduation. And we would all love to hear some exciting ideas of how to make that happen. Our speaker today is Dr. Jordan Spector. He is a graduate of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine of Yeshiva University and completed his emergency medicine residency training at Boston Medical Center in 2007. After serving a number of years in the education division in the Einstein Health Network in Philadelphia, he returned home to BMC to join the faculty in 2012 joining the education division in 2015 and becoming residency program director in September of 2019. He has been active in CORD, co-leading the education consult service and the new program and leaders track at the academic assembly. I ask you to give all your attention to Dr. Spector. Uh, all your phones will be muted during the presentation. The chat box is open. Feel free to post any questions there. And at the end of Dr. Spector's presentation, I will moderate the questions to him. Dr. Spector, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Weisberg. Um, I'm gonna share my screen so I can bring up my PowerPoint. And hopefully that works, everybody can see. Um, I will wait to hear if you can't um, or if I lose signal. So thank you, everyone. Um, I you really quick. The, okay, I appreciate having the opportunity to give this presentation today. When I was contacted by Moshe uh, a few weeks ago, to potentially lead this session, my first reaction was what an honor, and I absolutely was gonna move my shift for today and make sure I could um, pursue this opportunity. My next immediate gut reaction was, oh my dear gosh, I'm gonna give a talk to, I don't know how many people from my home on a topic for which there is no literature to review, no ability to hop onto PubMed or Google Scholar to learn what I would then relay to all of you. Um, and I know that I had a reaction probably like many of you have had, certainly at least in mid-March when the pandemic really um, got its legs and we were all confronted with uh, the social distancing laws that I didn't know what I could possibly do. And as I thought about this uh, session today, I envisioned something that was either four or five seconds long. You Zoom. Any questions? I really couldn't think of anything beyond that at first blush. And really my approach thereafter was to think about our graduates, uh, Boston Medical Center's PGY4 class who will be graduating next month and think about the experience that they've had over the last four years, which I'm sure is analogous to many of the residents in your programs. You know, arriving on that first day in July of intern year and doing that patient evaluation on that sort of common banal complaint, back pain, we all see a ton of back pain. And the patient says, I took 400 milligrams of ibuprofen an hour ago and it still hurts and I'm here. And that intern goes and presents to the senior or the attending um, and the attending's like, why not just give a dose of IM to Toralac? And that intern immediately thinks two doses of NSAIDs? I'm gonna cause kidney failure, right? All of these sort of little decisions that for all of us, once we've completed training or at least been more senior, don't give a moment's thought are really um, stressful for the junior learner. And as at my classes graduates progressed and they get some opportunity to participate in the trauma room and then have a role and then actually lead a trauma, that first occasion where you see a patient who's out of control and gosh forbid, takes a swing at a staff member, that first occasion where you call surgery before the CT has resulted and you get that incredible Hulk level anger response. How dare you call me when you don't have CT result yet? As they get more senior and learn to run the place a bit and realize just how many interruptions they encounter or the successes, you know, finishing your last ICU block or finally getting good feedback from that stickler of an attending with whom you work. I think it all makes for an extraordinary roller coaster of an experience over the course of three or four years. And we would really be doing a disservice to our learners if we did nothing more than said, here's a Zoom session um, and just a live feed, that which we're doing for 
our weekday didactics once a week. And that really it's incumbent upon us to think about how important an event this is for our learners um, and honor the magnitude of the accomplishment as best we can given these extraordinary and unique circumstances. So in my reading and preparation, I did stumble into this article. It's over 30 years old or so from the Annals of Internal Medicine. And it speaks, I think, to a sentiment that um, is pertinent here. Um, and it's about medical school graduation, but I think it applies. The agony and ecstasy of the preceding four years needed to find expression. There was a felt need for the students to regroup and rededicate themselves before going on. Commencement was a cere ceremony of recognition and reward, acknowledging the completion of requirements with shouts of joy and relief. But there was another aspect that need seniors needed to express. These feelings called for a setting where appropriate behavior is more solemn, thoughtful, where the appropriate attitude is one of humility and dedication in the face of the awesome responsibility about to be assumed. And it's that last portion that I think is one worth pondering and that your graduates who even seem the most cynical, ah, I'm moving on, I can't wait to graduate, or those who feel like a COVID has totally destroyed anything we're doing and I don't care anymore. I would submit to you that even those learners, as they approach that finish line of graduation, are aware of the magnitude of the moment, are aware that they're crossing perhaps the last finish line in what can be more than a decade of training, and that we owe it to them as program directors to do something anything beyond an hour on a Zoom call. And so what I hope to talk to you about in the next hour, probably be closer to 40 minutes, is some rationale to try to be creative um, and that which I've already spoken about, this idea of communicating to your learners that this matters, this is important. And though the world has dealt us a bad card here, I'm gonna try my best to demonstrate something significant for this accomplishment. And I'm gonna go through a couple of ways to come up with a, an event that is worthy and safe. Um, I don't wanna gloss over the fact that every one of us know as program directors that we have a responsibility for keeping both the graduates and our colleagues and any loved ones who are included safe from a very dangerous and highly infectious illness. Um, and I think in order to do that, you need to know what's permissible, where you are, what state you live in. I'm gonna emphasize the value of getting outside if in any way possible, of um, keeping your group small and using a digital service um, to live stream the events and include that larger community that have been included in all those years previously. I'll spend a couple of minutes talking about some gifts or mementos you may choose, some digital options as well that I learned about in my research for this session. I'll talk about a few bigger ideas for those who have a few more resources at their disposal renting equipment, renting facilities, and then I'm gonna conclude with some suggestions that were provided to me on the listserv when I put out a call for help earlier this month. Um, I wanna be very clear, I have no disclosures whatsoever. I don't know how to relay some of the options that exist for you without using proper names for facilities or companies. I got no skin in the game. These are all just interesting ideas, um, and I hope they come across as such. So first and foremost, what can you do? Um, I have included at the bottom of this page a URL that I think you all should be familiar with, assisting businesses with evolving COVID-19 rules and regulations. And um, I took a representative image off the website. Um, I had thought about toggling back and forth before the website, but I thought it would be clunky in this format. So I've just shown you a picture here, but if each of you hop on that web page, scroll over the state where your program resides, you can get hyperlinked to the most up-to-date rules in your region. And when I scrolled over Massachusetts earlier today, I saw Governor Baker's um, daily uh, state of the state uh, address in a video like it really is up to the moment and I would strongly suggest that you put this uh, website in your bookmark and as you more closely approach whenever your graduation session is making sure that whatever you're doing is up to date with all these changing regulations and as I mentioned earlier I think getting outside is a way to really assuage concerns that experts are pretty clear that when you are confined indoors 
in ventilate, indoor ventilation systems, when they are surrounded by walls and a ceiling, the infection risk goes up. And if you have any means to get outdoors, I think you can assuage the concerns of some of your colleagues and hopefully, at least theoretically, reduce the risk of infectivity for any person who may attend the event and be at risk for um, spreading an infection that they're not knowledgeable about. And so I highlight the great outdoors here. This is a bad 80s comedy, but I want the sentiment to come across. And many of you may have either observed or participated in some of these events that have taken place over the last few months. You can see a, a, a representative wedding event with um, groups of attendees spaced. Um, and in the lower left, you can see you can actually get super technical and make sure that every single family unit is at an individual table spaced at least six feet apart. And being outdoors obviously reduces risk, um, may increase some uh, flexible space that you might be able to use. We all know that any event doesn't feel special unless you're fed and brought a few beverages. And it is possible to do that in line with social distancing. And so I've given you this image of individually packaged meals. And a lot of restaurants and catering centers have moved to these sort of provisions. And I know most of you are familiar with this. And I think at minimum, if in fact you take what was your originally planned event and move it to an outdoor space which is accessible and provide this food, some masks, some copious access to hand sanitizers, you're providing something a little more intimate than a simple Zoom session would have provided. Now I know for many of you, envisioning this session will include a smaller group and that there are other people who would be interested in attending and zoom does seem to be the best way to accomplish that there are a few other services available but i think zoom has taken over the world in many ways here and i wanted to at least talk to you about some considerations in planning especially for an outdoor event so if you're outdoor and trying to use computer service, right, you need to make sure you have sufficiently strong Wi-Fi signal. Seems redundant, but I would strongly advocate for you to practice in the day preceding your event, making sure that it works, making sure there are no dead spots, and if there are, that you set up far away from that area. If in fact you have colleagues who will be contributing to the session via Zoom and won't be present in person, make sure that they have the same strong signal. If there's any concern in any way that your colleagues weak signal in some distant location will undermine your event, have them pre-record the content. For example, if you have a director of your research division who wants to give the research award to the graduate who deserves that, have them pre-record that video in advance. They distribute it to you in advance, and then you can play that video. That same faculty member can follow along via Zoom, but you don't run the risk of their spotty signal undermining sort of the sequence or the uh, seamlessness of your event. Another consideration I know um, has been a big concern is Zoom security, and that we've all heard of anecdotes of Zoom bombing that has taken place. Um, and they can be upsetting in certain instances. And I think it's important to at least strategize ways to prevent that in your provision, whatever direction you choose to go with Zoom. And so um, what I first want to relay is you should um, be sure that your computer has the most recent Zoom update, that they've improved their security features. And many of us have become familiar with Zoom. I imagine you have to be in order to get onto this session. Um, and you're probably familiar with this page that's to the right of your screen. And for those of you who set up a meeting and you schedule a meeting and you push that button, you may not be aware that that meeting ID has two options. You can either have your own personal meeting ID, which I've blocked out here, or generate one automatically. And the reason I blocked out that one here is it's mine. It's Jordan Spector's meeting ID. And for every session I've set up under that ID, it's the same exact number. So if I've set up my weekly didactics, my monthly education division under my personal meeting ID number, then I plan to do graduation under that same number. Anybody who's had access to that number previously now has access to your graduation event. 
If you generate one automatically, you obviate any of that possibility of that number being out there and hopped on by somebody that you might not have invited. Furthermore, you can require a password and you put in whatever password you'd like. And if you do choose to do that, and I would suggest you consider it, think of a password that works for you that you're gonna distribute in the hour or two prior to the event. Don't have that information out there. You can enable the waiting room. This may be familiar to some, less familiar to others. The waiting room is sort of a virtual antechamber. Core just used it right here for this session. Um, and if you are running your department session as PD, you might consider recruiting a coordinator or an APD as a confederate to watch over the waiting room. And then you can be sure of every individual entering your session. And then once you start the session, there are a couple things you can do. Lock the meeting. So you all, we all are familiar with this lower ribbon. If you click on that security button, um, you bring up a, a drop up menu, I guess you'd call that a bring up menu um, where you click lock meeting. Um, and once that's clicked, no other person can enter the meeting. In addition, under the share screen, if you click that little mini uh, triangle to the right of share screen, you bring up the advanced sharing options and can stipulate that you as the host are the only one who can share a screen and make sure that somebody doesn't inadvertently or intentionally share an image that you wouldn't want shared with your group. If in fact you have colleagues who are going to share images and will be remote, I might consider making sure that you have access to those images as the host, and then you can share it for your screen, despite the fact that your colleague is presenting on that particular piece of information. So make sure you know how to use Zoom correctly and keep your program safe. Now, I'm sure many of you who are watching are in an urban center or don't have access to any outdoor or outside space. And therefore, some of the suggestions I've already provided may be a little bit more challenging for you. And then I'm just going to run through some other ideas that I've come across. I am hopeful that as I run through some of these, I'm sure some will seem silly. I hope others feel like might be a good idea. And again, all under the heading of you as program director have gone out of your way to try to make the best of a tough situation. So the car parade, we've all seen them at this point. Probably many of you have participated in them. Um, some of you might feel like, oh, it's trite, that, you know, three months of doing this. I've seen a bunch of them. I will tell you, I was just in a car parade this week, one of my daughter's friend's birthday. Um, and there were maybe a dozen cars that went through and that birthday boy was smiling from ear to ear. The fact that it had happened, I don't know how many times previously in our country, didn't diminish from the experience for this birthday boy. And if you can gather a dozen cars, 15 cars amongst nurses, junior residents, fellow faculty, and have them travel from resident home to resident home, festooned with balloons or signs, maybe you can even put something that says, congratulations to graduate, X and congratulations to graduate Y on each of the individual cars. Um, that could be meaningful. I, I, I guarantee your residents won't soon forget that moment. Some of you may have close affiliations with your pre-hospital EMS systems and they may lend you a truck for an hour or two. And you can imagine a truck covered in balloons or holiday lights might in fact um, elicit some pretty big smiles from your graduates as they see them parading through their community. And don't just drive by, drop off some gifts, some swag, and these are gonna be some ideas many of you probably already thought of. Custom t-shirts, custom candy. You can actually order M&Ms that say, congratulations to the BMC class of 2020. Or you can buy M&Ms with a picture of your hospital's logo on them for a fairly reasonable price. So you get a couple bags of candy and some other food and gifts and trinket and put it in a custom drive-by bag so that every graduate gets a little sort of care package. A big box of popcorn, right? Seems kind of funny, but with, you know, something personalized in each bucket, $30 a bucket. If you have a graduating class of eight or 10, that's a pretty reasonable expense. And again, sort of a token of remembering the event for the time thereafter. If your residents are not in a very urban environment and have private homes and perhaps a little lawn, you can think about a lawn sign, right? So you come by with your 12 cars and each of the graduates has a honk and wave sign placed in their lawn. For anybody who's feeling kind of silly or super eccentric, 
a face of each of your graduates planted in each of the lawns. Um, I'm not sure how I would feel if my face was put up in my lawn, but again, I think that graduate would be like, oh my goodness, that's funny. Um, and I appreciate that my program director went to that length. May not be a good fit for everybody, but worth considering. I think many of us are familiar with the card that we passed around on special occasions, the birthday card or the condolences card. Um, and, you know, there is certainly some sentiment that's conveyed when every one of your community members signs it and writes a little anecdote, but not really practical for a graduation ceremony where you may have 10, 15, 20 graduates from your class. Um, and I'd like you to be aware that there are some digital options. So thank you to my colleague who told me about Kudo Board. And this is a, a representative image of the one that I've started to put together for my residency group. Um, so Kudo Board is one of a number of services that are out there that allow you to create a bulletin board of missives as well as pictures and videos that will scroll through. So this is sort of the left to right scan of the screen image and can scroll down for as many images as you um, choose to put in the kudo board. And so uh, for like 20 bucks, um, I paid for a service for uh, infinite number of uh, submissions from my colleagues and have asked junior residents, fellow attendings, unit coordinators, nurses, ancillary staff, registration staff, to all put in a few notes. And if on the night of graduation, each of our graduates receives this CUDA board with 100, 150 contributions, I think that that would be meaningful. It would be for me at least. If you're interested in seeing what's out there, here are a number of other services that I found. I didn't dig too deeply on all of these, but just know that the CUDA board is one of a number of options that you might consider if you're looking for a nice digital uh, thank you acknowledgement for all of your graduates. Cameo. Cameo is probably familiar to some of you. Um, it's another service that's gotten quite big during the pandemic and social distancing. If you're not familiar, it's a service that enlists the help of famous people, and I'm going to use finger quotes there, um, where you can pay anywhere from 50 up to a couple hundred dollars to have a particular individual recite some five, six, eight minute message that is personalized to you or to your group. And so if you're a big fan of stand-up comedy, you could consider paying for Gilbert Godfrey to do a missive just for your group. Turn the volume down on that one. If you're a fan of the Wonder Years in the olden days, probably not many of our current residents remember. Um, if you're from Wisconsin and Brett Favre would be a meaningful cameo appearance, pay a couple hundred bucks and he will speak specifically to your program X in Wisconsin. The Soup Nazi, and I did see just yesterday that Mike Tyson is another uh, person on Cameo, if you're a boxing fan or like the movie Hangover. So that is uh, an opportunity for you to submit a video that seems sort of significant and unique for your graduates to relay at the time of your graduation. And I do have a few colleagues who are working on these sort of efforts at large. My former resident and friend, Kathy Kopeck at Carolinas Medical Center and my very good friend and role model, Leslie Oyama, hey Leslie, um, is putting together this effort to accumulate a number of videos um, that we can all put together and share in a broader community allow each of us to do a congratulations to one another and splice them together. And then anyone who's participating will have access to this video to show on graduation night, another event that feels unique and not like something that they've seen in previous years. I would be remiss if I didn't remind you of the Alien program scheduled for mid-June, June 15th specifically. Um, Esther Chu, Mel Herbert, and Amal Matu are three of the headlining speakers. I think of this as an analog to the event that was hosted earlier this month um, where President Obama, former President Obama was highlighted, um, sort of a gra uh, uh, congratulations to all the graduates across the country. And they are um, 
promising some other surprise celebrities. Um, and we need to wait till June 15th to see who they are. But you might in creating a graduation week or a graduation month, have your graduates gather in obviously uh, quarantine permissible numbers to watch this event and sort of celebrate alongside the Alien crew who put out so much wonderful content. Are you thinking bigger? You have some resources that perhaps some other programs don't have. You had an event canceled and had a sum of money refunded to you that you weren't anticipating. There's some ways to think big. This is, you can see, this is a posting just from two days ago. The hottest ticket in town amidst the pandemic, drive-in movie theaters are coming back. And so there are still drive-in movie theaters in many communities. And there are some nearby here in Boston that I was not aware of prior to the last few months. And I can't help but think of that awesome scenario that Dr. Weitzberg said his daughter will be participating in in her high school graduation, a uh, drive-in movie theater that has been rented specifically for a graduation event, everyone socially distancing in their individual vehicles, the officiant, be it the principal or whoever's the MC, at the front projected image on the movie screen and each graduate rather than coming and walking across the stage will drive in their car around the front of the drive-in theater to receive all of their diplomas. Definitely unique, um, definitely a bit outside the box um, and another way for you to do something that really would feel sort of special for your graduates. Don't have a drive-in theater nearby? You can rent a theater or you can rent the equipment. And so this is a page or a portion of a page that I ripped, ripped off the web showing that this particular venue is uh, available for rent for graduations, weddings, and corporate events. And if you don't have a locale that is available to you nearby, you can actually rent equipment. So here's a Google search showing all of these different options for renting the movie screen plus all the audio visual equipment and most of the uh, prices i've found are under a thousand dollars for two to three hours use of this equipment along with experts to set it up set you up with your home computer network and system uh, to be sure it all works and then obviously to take it down after the fact and so if you have access to some outdoor space and want to set up something analogous to a drive-in movie theater, you can do that in your own home space. For those of you with real resources, first of all, I'm envious. Um, second of all, there are some big ideas out there and I'm just gonna give you a couple and hopefully allow them to trigger your creative juices for you. So there, here's a community in the Poconos in Pennsylvania where a high school rented out the Pocono Raceway track and a particular high school class are all using the track. They're bringing in their own private vehicles. The graduation is gonna be held over the loudspeaker and each graduate is going to cross the finish line with a waving flag for every uh, graduate as they are named. Definitely unique and definitely memorable for those graduates. I'm sure it's an event they won't soon forget. And I'm seeing examples of this around the country. So Phoenix Raceway, Texas Motor Speedway, there's actually evidently 23 separate high schools with a planned graduation event at the Texas Motor Speedway where each of the graduates are going to be in a private vehicle in the pit area, in the pit area where the pit crew um, normally remains, and each of the graduates will be called upon, will leave their vehicle and walk up to receive their diploma, all the audience members obviously honoring social distancing, and the uh, Daytona Speedway as well, available for rent for communities who have those resources and wherewithal. So if you are in an academic facility where you're affiliated with an undergraduate uh, school, well, you might consider, do they have any outdoor facilities that are sitting and not currently in use? Um, and if they do, they're suffering through this pandemic and the associated financial troubles like the rest of us. And you might be able to get a deal to use one of those outdoor spaces in really creative ways for a price that you wouldn't have got under other circumstances. And I'm gonna conclude in this last portion talking a little bit about what I've learned from other members of our community. Um, I am again at Boston Medical Center. 
Um, this is a picture of the site where we had planned to hold our residency graduation in the stateroom. It's a lovely venue, floor to ceiling windows, views of the city. And we were going to do a ceremony uh, like we had done many years prior with a few speeches, a number of awards, um, and obviously offering diplomas and a lot of funny videos and some combination of warmth and humor. Um, and none of that is possible, unfortunately. And so the most recent plans that are evolving by the day include um, the use of one of my colleagues' outdoor spaces. So one of uh, my attending colleagues has a, a space that's about 15, 16 miles outside of Boston. Um, and you can see this large, beautiful grass area where we will bring, be bringing a smaller audience or group than we would have otherwise and uh, renting a drive-in movie style screen to have them set up for us um, where I will be able to project along with my colleagues for the events that we hope to um, emulate regardless of current times with some appropriately social distance tables and a tent to be sure that we're protected in the weather. I want to thank the members of our community who reached out to give me some ideas that they're using, and I'm going to relay a couple here as well. So one suggestion from LA County USC is that they are going to usurp their Thursday morning conference day towards the latter portion of the year for an informal graduation event. And that was as a vote by the graduating seniors. And rather than holding routine didactics on that particular morning, they are going to have a ceremony with acknowledgments of each of the graduating seniors, giving each of them an opportunity for some chance to speak, offer their reflections, tell some funny stories or anecdotes, provide some awards and recognitions, obviously the requisite funny video that um, every program ought to have, and some gifts, appreciation packs. One of the items that was um, bounced around that I uh, was informed on was a gift card through open table and that once restaurants are um, safe who knows when that will be that they may have some opportunity to go out for a really nice meal something that they can have and hold and remember and then celebrate with after the fact. Thank you to Dr. McVean for reaching out to tell me that her event is normally over 150 people, but they've had to obviously downsize significantly and are hoping to hold an event in the barn of one of their faculty, neighboring or one of their community faculty members. And we'll do small catered box food with some plans to project the ceremony to a larger group and um, in an effort to stay below the state guidelines, which as of now are 50 people or less. The graduates are able to bring one um, significant other or whoever, whomever they choose, some residency leadership and select other faculty and everyone else will, will be watching remotely. Thank you to Dr. Archer for chiming in. Memorial Health System has the good fortune of having five graduates this year, so much less pressure against the uh, quarantine rules. And so she is planning to host a dinner with appropriate social distancing with herself, two faculty members, one of whom is the CMO, and a live streaming Zoom feed with presentations by other colleagues, including the health system CEO. Dr. Archer, consider pre-recording that if there's any concerns about Wi-Fi signal. Interspersing different videos that are described as either heartwarming or funny and her graduates wanted something informal that if in fact they are to have this downsized event they didn't want the jacket suit and tie and as such requested an event in scrubs which for me seems like a reasonable provision given all the disappointment that these graduates might otherwise be feeling and finally uh, Dr. Church and UMass did reach out to say they're doing something a bit different. They're going to do a bit of sort of a walkthrough at the hospital with a drive-by enlisting the help of both Worcester pre-hospital services as well as Worcester Police Department um, and a little bit of pomp and circumstance as those vehicles go past and then the group is going to distribute into smaller more socially distant groups where a Zoom ceremony slash roast will take place, um, obviously with some associated gifts and sundry items thereafter too. 
And so, in summary, I am hopeful that I have um, given you a few ideas that feel safe given these extraordinary times, um, and that going outside is a good way to accomplish that, that every one of us are gonna use a digital feed of some sort or another, and making sure that you have that running to a T and have it sufficiently secure is um, imperative. And most of all, that no matter what you choose to do, any effort will be received by your learner as your acknowledgement of the importance of this event. So thank you very much. And available for questions. Hi. Jordan, thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Great. First of all, thank you so very much for that presentation. I'm really excited to see who is listed on the Cameo website. That may be uh, an exciting thing to look through. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to post them in the chat section, and I will moderate them and present them to Dr. Spector. Uh, so the first question we have is as follows. We are planning to have a small in-person event for our graduates, one guest, and a small group of faculty. Any thoughts on the best technology to use to try to make the experience live and virtual for other members of our department that can't physically be present? Yeah, an excellent question. You know, there are a few, we all mentioned Zoom, and I think what Zoom does provide is the ability for everyone's voice to be heard, um, for any audio visual um, in elements that are included to be shared with that larger community. Um, and I know for many graduates, it's the funny videos that really make um, some of the uh, lighthearted experience all the more. Um, I, there are some other services available. I think many of you are familiar with Microsoft Teams and Google Hangouts, and they probably can be leveraged. But they have more, um, I believe, caps on the number of participants that can be involved. Um, I think it really is challenging for dis physically distant people to participate in anything that is not um, digital. In other words, if you were to have sort of an in-person handing of an award, I don't know how you do that remotely. Um, if, in fact, you'd like to depict sort of the provision of that award, perhaps filming in advance, it doesn't quite have the same uh, bang for that buck. Uh, and again, uh, this is not a topic where I bring sort of true expertise, so I would love to hear other thoughts from this community. Sure, so I guess a follow-up question to that question is, but with Zoom, unless you are the one standing in front of the computer screen set up, it won't let you visualize what's going on in the room, correct? Yes, yeah, so you are definitely somewhat limited by <laughs> the um, being right in that front space. Now, if in fact um, the concern is whether you'd be able to follow along on a screen, then obviously you're seeing here a, a screen share permits both the obviously face and voice of the MC slash program director, as well as whatever is projected, be it um, images or video. But if in fact there's sort of a larger physical space the only way that I am familiar with is um, either twofold. One, obviously scanning back with the screen and then everything is gonna be off in the distance a bit in the image. Or two, in that it is possible to have obviously all of these uh, face images, um, live video taking place simultaneously. Um, and that it is also possible to use Zoom on a smartphone that you could potentially have other audience participants on the same Zoom call, but directing their camera elsewhere. So you get a little bit of a broad image. It wouldn't be aligned across these various boxes, you know, sort of the Brady Bunch arrangement of all these boxes across your screen. Um, but you might be able to include a few other images live in that way. But again, open to other more creative folks who um, encountered this problem. So we have a couple of uh, suggestions that are posted on the chat. One is you could potentially do a YouTube live video. And another post says, I am an APD and I plan on acting as a video cameraman using a gimbal I bought off of Amazon so it doesn't make the viewers dizzy. 
that would be great um, to share that particular product. Again, don't want to um, step on any sort of uh, copyright issues whatsoever, but I think that that is an interesting idea. And assuming then that that image would be what was projected on the screen that then that is then distributed, making sure I understand that. Yeah, I guess a you know certainly a economic way to do it is to just have somebody on their iPhone connected to the Zoom and they can be the presenter or sharing their screen, so to speak, and have that person continually move their camera around the room to show what's going on in the room. Presumably a more expensive option would be to have a professional camera person who can live stream what's going from their video camera. Uh, I know that technology exists. Uh, I'm assuming it's a little more pricey. Well received. Okay, uh, and Leslie Oyama posted the link for uh, if you have some famous folks who want to upload a shout out congrats video, we will share uploads with all. So that link is on the chat. It is https colon double slash b i t dot l y slash e r grads. And that's on the chat if anybody would like to see that. Uh, another suggestion we have is we use GoToMeeting for didactics and staff meetings. It's not great sound quality and limited lag time. Up to 250 attendees are possible. Also, healthcare, healthcare providers receive a discount. Yeah, are, are people struggling? I mean, I don't wanna put all my eggs in the one basket. Um, I certainly spoke about the Zoom bombing. I really do like that Zoom affords the possibility of almost as many um, participants as you could hope for, um, and uh, receptive to other sort of facilities as well. And another message says the app House Party is also like a fun version of Zoom for anyone who is tired of Zoom meetings. I love it. I, I don't know that I would be nearly as well qualified as my 15 and my 12 year old on House Party. <laughs> ask your kids because I know that it's popular in the middle and high school set. Uh, actually, one of my residents mentioned that to me as an option for some things also. So apparently our current residents are using it. I, I, I think there is a limit on how many people can participate, though. It may be worth looking into. Uh, another post says, at Maryland, we will have a Zoom graduation and making party boxes for the graduates. They will have graduation decorations, swag gifts, the diploma and graduation plaque that we hand out, champagne and confetti poppers. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that those graduates will absolutely feel like, whoa, champagne and all those other, like really sort of, I would imagine that that's not routine every year. And I think part of that is your graduates feeling like, you know, because what, people typically are able to celebrate can't happen in 2020 that these other provisions feel like some consolation and again that sentiment that is so important that i hope that they all receive which is we're really proud of them and that we really want to honor the momentous occasion that is graduation this training yeah so just as a follow-up to the last comment there was a post from someone else that house party has poor security so certainly look into that if you're going to use that, moda that modality. Another suggestion is you can also use two different programs for each item. For instance, a Zoom with SlideShare to see the slides and a WebEx with video camera to see the room, audience, and speakers. People have to have two devices, of course. Yeah, I think that's great. I think probably it would be wise in follow-up to this session for me to repost on the core website let's put together some ideas because i think probably since i um put in that call for help about three or four weeks ago and today i'm sure many of you have sort of crystallized plans um and i would like i mean the ultimate spirit of this like so many wonderful things with cord is that there's so many of us out here trying to do our best by our learners and we shouldn't be operating in insular from one another. Um, and 
in that many of you have been thinking of all these ideas or maybe had some ideas play with this section, um, I'd like to sort of reinvigorate the post on the website. Um, and then hopefully those of you who have had sort of your creative juices jogged can then chime in and continue to parlay some of these ideas to the broader community. That would be great. I'm sure that would be very useful. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions? Feel free to post them on the chat. Okay, in that case, I believe we have addressed everyone's question. Uh, I'm sorry, there's one more post. Depending on your Zoom account level, you can live stream to YouTube. We will only give the Zoom code to our residents and faculty, but their extended family and friends can watch on live stream. It keeps the Zoom crowding more controlled. Oh, interesting. That's a great idea. Thank you for posting that. I want to offer a tremendous thank you to Dr. Jordan Spector for this wonderful presentation. I think this is something that is on all of our minds right now. And I'm, I am certain that we can take something from some of the wonderful ideas that he suggested and bring them back to our home institutions and provide our graduates with a graduation ceremony that will certainly be meaningful as we celebrate this milestone in their lives. I wanna thank all of you for participating. It is a, always a pleasure to have everyone on. Uh, our next Cord Connects will be taking place the last week of June. Keep your eyes on your emails for those. And remember, this session will be posted on the Cord website. If anyone missed it or missed part of it or wants to review it, it will be available on the Cord website for everybody to watch. Everyone, please be safe and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Dr. Weisberg, for the opportunity. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you for doing it.